roles as well. I love that. I've heard from a couple of you about agent to agent referrals, which I think um, our network just here in the Hudson Valley makes it easy, right? Because we have 600 agents across our three offices that serve at any place you want to sell real estate in the Hudson Valley. And then our offices are part of the, the tri-state region, right? So we have 10,000 Keller Williams agents in the tri-state that are selling real estate that can be our referral partners. And then when you zoom out farther, we're part of the largest real estate franchise in the country. So there's 170,000 KW agents that can be your referral partner. So um, I love agent to agent referrals. When I was in, uh, when I was selling real estate, I was, uh, that was a big part of the my lead generation source. So, all right, ladies, let's dig right in. Arlene, what is your main lead generation source right now? Right now, um, repeat business. Repeat okay. Business. Um, the people that I dealt with last year are calling back again, um, and it's a lot of uh, rentals. So a lot of agents don't want to do rentals. So I'm getting uh, referrals for rentals, and it's um, once I get them, then it's repeat, repeat, repeat. I have one client that um, I've already done ten transactions with them. I have another, um, and actually she's a friend of mine, rented out her place for uh, twice already. I have another gentleman I've already rented again this year. Um, yeah, repeat business. So, and the, so the repeat business is you're locating landlords and then you are every year re-renting their properties for them when they become vacant. Right, and I got those rentals through agent referrals that do not want to do rentals. Interesting. I don't know if anybody on the call has ever thought that. I don't want to do rentals. It's right a lot of money. What you know, it's a tough market. So tell me, um, tell me more about how you are working with these um with these landlords and then what you're doing with the rental leads once you get them. Okay, so the first time I did a rental, I, my head wanted to explode because the amount of emails that I got, people requesting information, applications, it's very overwhelming. But when you add into the Emma, you know, this is a learning, it was a learning process. So when you add the credit score into the uh, MLS, you know, it's got to be 650 or better. You kind of knock out a lot of people that do not have credit. So it kind of, because the landlord doesn't want to see, you know, I've tried to, oh, they, they sound like, you know, they make good money, this, that. But if they don't have the credit score, he doesn't even want me to send that to him. And actually, this I just rented another apartment um, this week, and he has a management person that takes over and makes the decision. So I just send her the paperwork. She makes the decision. And it, it's a really, I mean, it was less than two weeks, and it's gone already. Um, and like I mentioned before, I think there are so many rentals on the market, and um, I've had a situation where... I was showing rentals and I told the gentleman, I think you should buy a house because, you know, you're putting a lot of money down. Um, and he says he had a house and if I was willing to sell it. So I ended up selling his home during the pandemic. Um, and I think that's going to happen a lot because I think that there's a lot of rentals and I think they're all, not all of them, but a grand majority might be people from the city that are not coming up now. And they just want to, you know, pay the mortgage. Um, but if they can't rent it out, they might want to sell. Yeah, right. So it's a having landlords as your client can be repeat business, right? You're repeat renting business. in the short term. You're you're renting it, the property year after year, and then mm -hmm. at some point, usually they're they want to sell and buy something else, or they want to sell and cash out on their investment, and so then you can become the real estate agent that helps them sell, which then potentially if you find a buyer for that sale, you just take over and that new landlord you keep re-renting the property for. I love that. And um, this, excuse me, this particular, there was one particular landlord, he has four units. So I'm constantly, you know, and then he has, he surprised me, he had another unit somewhere else. So he had, there's five different rentals right there with one landlord. Right, right. So it's a, and then you shared with me um, what you're doing with tenants too. What are you doing with the te the tenants that you're the tenant leads you're getting? 
You so, throw them out, right? You're just like throwing yeah. them in the garbage, never thinking about them again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they have to they have to provide their phone number and their email and their name, and I'm putting them into my um, database, and then I'm going to be sending them a smart plan, encouraging encouraging them to buy because if you can afford, um, you know, two thousand dollars a month, you should be able to afford a house, um, right? And uh, and there's uh you know first first time home buyer you know discounts. I think my Gianetti was saying yesterday that he had a mortgage that he's willing to give four thousand dollars if they reach their criteria. So I could inform them all this stuff and encourage them to buy because um, it would be good for them. I love that. So you're creating specific relevant content, right? Mm -hmm. And you're using command for this, right? Right. So you're yep. going to create, so you have them tagged as tenants so that yes. you can segment them. And then you're going to send them specific relevant content that is going to be geared towards potentially buying their first house. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you'll, you will convert a good handful of them because just like you said, uh, as the pandemic, it, it, pandemic increased rental prices. Like, you know, just like you said, people are paying what you could pay, maybe sometimes more than you would pay in a mortgage now in a rental. And if they're educated a little bit about some of these programs that can really, really help them make the, make the jump. So I love, I love this. I love the um, double ended benefit of targeting the landlords and getting repeat, um, <laughs> Um, have, we're getting repeat business from them and then targeting the, the tenant leads and then nurturing them and gearing them to be first time home buyers. I love that. Cindy Lee, what, are, where is your main lead leads coming from right now? Um, well, most of my deals are also repeat and, um, referrals either because my, my, my prior life, <laughs> which I still do. I'm a paralegal. I worked with a lot of lenders, a lot of other attorneys and um, mortgage brokers. And very often I get a lot of, I get referrals from them or just, you know, my sphere of influence. And so um, now that I've been doing it for four years, even though I'm still kind of pretty much doing it part-time, um, I still get some leads from them, but now I'm having that repeat happen. You know, as someone that I sold a house to four years ago is coming around and now they're buying again um, and they're gonna, gonna rent out the other house. So I got that. I have an investor that I work with that I've done several, uh, bought, he bought a couple properties and then we rented them and now he bought one and now we're flipping that one. And now, you know, so it's just, it now it's like repeat. But, um, but yeah, mostly referrals. I love that. So, and, and the, so the referrals are like business to business referrals. It's with a, it's a professional network that you've developed with other people that are getting real estate leads potentially. And, and then you're, you've created a system there. It sounds like. And like past clients and friends I've gotten, there's like, I have a couple that were like chains. It was like, I closed with, with this person and then they, uh, referred me to the next. I closed with them. They referred me to somebody else. I closed with them. <laughs> I have a few of those that are like just chains. I love that. Yeah. I, this is really is a relationship based business, right? So the better quality customer service we provide, the more likely our past clients are to recommend us to everyone that they know, because if they had a, if they had a great experience, right? If you can think of a time, even if it's not real estate related, that you had a great experience at a restaurant or at a concert or going out to an event of some sort, don't you tell people about that right afterwards? And so I think um, one of the, uh, what I'm hearing is um, one of the strategies might be making sure you're creating that five-star customer service experience for your clients so that you do create these raving fans out of them that anytime someone mentions, mentions real estate, you want them to say, you have to go to my girl, Cindy Lee. She is going to take such good care of you, right? Exactly. I love that. Okay, Kim, what are you doing right now? What is your main lead generation source right now? So my SOI, my sphere of influence, um, you know, I probably, you know, reach out once a quarter um, to everyone in my database. And some people may be ready. Some people are ready. 
but um, just being consistent with that and reaching out to my people, um, even if it's real estate or not, just want to let them know that I'm here for them. And I've been getting um, referrals, tons of referrals, um, um, repeat business, uh, and, and some new people that I haven't met, just converting them. So, I love that. Mm -hmm. So how does that conversation go, those quarterly phone calls? Is it just a check-in? Is there a specific um, like script that you're using? What are you doing with those calls? It's mostly a forward conversation. So, you know, um, right now it's like how, just checking in, how's your summer going? You know, any vacation plans? And then, you know, how's work, the kids? Um, and then real estate always comes up. So um, it's usually a conversation from five to 10 minutes. And, um, you know, just being consistent with that every day. I love that. And for anybody um, who's who might not be familiar with the Ford method, can you explain what that is? Yeah. So um, I've been to Bold like six different times and it's always brought up and it's there's different um, forms, you know, to the script. But essentially, it's you're talking about family occupation um, recreational activities, I believe. And then D, um, dreams, what the D is. <laughs> dreams. dreams, right. Yep. Yeah. And then the, the real estate, um, house, you know, vacation stuff like that. Um, but it, 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 it's, it's more of a natural script to me. I think it's, um, it's a great way to yes, check in, but also not be too invasive and just say, Hey, you have a referral for me, you know? Right. Yeah. It's a simple, um, process to follow, right? So how's the family? How's work going? Have any fun summer plans? Do you live in your dream? Are you currently living in your dream home? That's the question I've been asking people. It's a it's a simple way that I, I hear from agents all the time that they're a little nervous about reaching out to people because they don't know what to say. Um, and they don't want the person to feel like they're just calling them to, to do like a sales um, check-in. And so I, I think the Ford method is a super simple way to, to have those conversations. I love that. So Arlene, what is the most important thing you've added into your business in the past year? In the past year? Well, I've started to do a lot more marketing. Okay. Um, I actually, um, I, I actually have a picture over here. So I did this magazine thing and I just sent it to family and friends and um, it's just chock full of articles. And then I kept quite a few of them um, that I want to send like to expireds or people that I think might be interested in selling. And the other thing I do is postcards, um, expireds, no letter. It's a quick little postcard, um, you know, and I just add the address and mail it. And then I started now because I'm, I'm reading on marketing and it's saying that, you know, people need to see your face more often. So I've made sure that, um, that I put my face on my advertising. So I started a program with Valpac um, just last, uh, last month. It's going to go out three times this year. Um, it's affordable. It's uh, you get to pick your area. So they have sectioned areas. Supposedly it's 10,000 homes for $331. And so I sent out and it's, you know, the bow pack coupon that you get a, like a pack full of like coupons. So I was in there once and then now I've, I've changed the, um, I've changed the direction to hit people that own land. So this is the one that's gonna go out um, in the next mailing, it says mm -hmm. got land. Mm -hmm. And then it says, uh, don't let your valuable land, land sit idle. So I'm going to try to um, target landowners. And then the other is home rentals, you know, um, unlock the income potential of your property by renting it out. So I, you know, trying to target different aspects of real estate, not just uh, home. Mm -hmm. And then I, the next time I'll go back to homes. Um, what else am I doing? You know, um, I always say, you know, you have to have your cards. My boyfriend, you know, he has a stack of cards and he's constantly, you know, promoting me. I also um, have a part-time job at UPS and there, everybody approaches me about real estate. You know, once they know you're in real estate, so a lot, you know, people come over company, they always talk about real estate. So, um, so they know, you know, I'm keeping everybody informed that I do real estate. And it's nice when somebody says, Hey, 
do you want to sell my house? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> so um, the other thing too, um, postcards, um, I they do work, not always, but they do work. And I, well, I use the uh, the one that we the office does through um, KW. Mm -hmm. Beautiful card went out. I did get a hit. Um, very nice home. Um, and what else do I do? When you're mailing the postcards, are you farming an area? Meaning, are you sending the postcards to the same area over and over again? No. Um, yeah, that that was just in the area where I sold the house. Mm -hmm. That particular one. The circle prospecting. Um, so, yeah. And then I've also so, sent out the golden letter to a certain area also. Um, but I'm, I really think that Valpac being, you know, because I'm trying to find business close to home. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping, you know, to get more business in my area and not have to travel out far. Um, I and love that. That's it. But I'm always so talking real estate. <laughs> marketing and putting yourself out there consistently. Um, one question I did have, is there a, um, a particular reason why you chose the land? What was your thought process around adding the, the advertisement for land? Because um, I see a lot of new builds. Okay. And I think there's a lot of, uh, there is people interested in land. I actually have um, a listing up in Sullivan County, 50 acres, and I've gotten quite a few calls when I remember in the past land just sits there and they say it takes years to sell. Well, I don't think that happens anymore. Okay. Uh, I, I have had like, I mean, I've shown the property twice and I've had like six people inquire about it, which is, I thought unusual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people inquiring. Yeah. That's great. Yep. So again, it's like finding a niche, right? And then marketing to it and being specific, tailoring your message specific towards one person that that might be an applicable message to that specific group of people instead of yeah. generalized. So when you're, when you sent the postcard and got the listing lead, it sounds like you were circle prospecting. So it caught a homeowner's attention because it was talking about how you just sold their neighbor's house and that's applicable to them. Right. If you're sending out and saying specifically land, someone that has land that's specific to them, um, rentals is specific to them. So the tailor, I love the idea of like tailoring that marketing message and making it customized. And also, I think a lot of people forget, you know, that they have land, you know, and they're not living on the land. Right. And it's just sitting there. So I'm kind of waking them up. But the land that I have listed is repeat business. I've actually rented for her. I rented actually a couple of times and I have a rental on the market now from her and now she put her piece of land on the market. So I love repeat that. Business. Some more repeat, repeat and referral. Yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Cindy, what would you say is the most important thing you've added to your business in the past year? Um, I've added quite a few things and I think they all kind of work together. So um, I've added additional coaching and accountability. So um, I have coaching often with my team leader, with Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Zoe's on here. Yay, Zoe. And I have uh, a MAPS coach that I've been working with. And I've gotten a lot more visible on social media. I've kind of vamped that up a little bit. And with that increased visibility, it helps me because I'm also doing a lot more networking. I'm going out to social events and I'm going to networking events, which is something I'd usually be like, I don't want to go. I don't, but I'm doing those things. And then when I'm there, like I went to like a couple events and they're like, oh my God, this is Cindy. She's like the celebrity realtor. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but they're like, you're everywhere. I love that. And I'm like, am I? But, and that perception is real. And I've actually gotten a good amount of referrals just from that because they're seeing me a lot more. And now people are associating me with that real estate. And then the things that I put into place that I say I'm going to do with that extra accountability and that coaching, I am actually, you know, trying to get those things done. I won't say try, I intend and I'm doing and I'm getting those things done. So, um, so yeah, they all kind of work together. So I don't think it's just one thing. I'm doing just several that are helping. 
And so I, I, I love to hear about the coaching because I think as the market shifts, what I hear agents, the biggest mistake they do is they drop their coaches. They go, I can't afford X amount of dollars a month, or I don't have the time to sit in and, um, and work with a coach really. So can you share with me, what is the, the number one thing you, you've found value in, in coaching? Okay. Now I was almost one of those. Uh huh. Kelly went to Zoe and said, I'm thinking of dropping my MAPS coach because this is a lot of money mm-hmm. and I don't have it. Um, and she gave me a few things to think about because she said people always do that. And so I had to figure out, was he adding value? Was he helping me? Um, and he is actually. So some of the things that I'm doing, like I'm doing certain seminars and and things of that nature, even with the social media, some of the things I was just doing, but having no plan behind them to then capture the lead and to do follow up and things of that nature. So we like, you know, both of them just gives me those extra ideas. So maybe you should do this. Why don't you do this? Come back to me next week and show me how you've done this. And I'm like, oh, God, now I have to do it. Right. Uh-huh. Um, so that extra accountability and those fresh ideas, things that I might not have thought of on my own is also, you know, pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. I think a coach can have a good um, 3000 foot overview of your business to help guide you. Right. And then definitely the accountability portion of it can is really the secret sauce in in business is how are you holding yes. yourself accountable? Is it somebody holding you accountable or are you somebody that's able to be accountable to just yourself. Most people without an accountability partner or coach or somebody that they're working with, it's very difficult to um, have the 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 discipline to be held accountable um, in a way that, that a, a coach can provide. So I love hearing that. And of course, we have tons of coaches in the office, right? You can coach with our productivity coaches. You can coach with our team leaders. We have MAPS coaching. We have other coaching options for you. So if anybody on the call is interested in exploring coaching, um, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to explain what coaching options we have. I'm sure the team leaders in the office or the productivity coaches would be happy to answer any questions you have directly about coaching. And I and I love that. And I'm I'm very passionate about coaching. So I love hearing that. Kim, what would you say is the most important thing you've added to your business in the past year? Yeah, so um, this is one that hasn't been said yet. Um, So I definitely do the coaching. I don't do as much um, like marketing um, as much. But um, in the past year, as like my business continues to grow, I've been really pulling down on like systems. Um, Like I I remember um, joining Keller Williams and um, for the first time being introduced to command. And since then I, it's been a messy ride, but I think it was really great as like a new agent to go all in, um, putting all my contacts there. And as it advances, I just been adding smart plans for all the people that I've met and for people that I have not met. And um, it just allowed me to like grow my business so much, you know, focus on the people that have an urgent need now versus people that, you know, are two, five years down the road. So I always have something in the pipeline um, and, you know, the systems have really been um, a good way of like organizing and, and definitely growing my business. And so with your database, how are you organizing them to figure out who, when to, when to follow up with people when? Yeah, so the quarterly calls, um, you know, when you're checking in with them, they may have that need now or they may still have that need, you know, two years down the road, like who knows. But based off of that, um, I just go to the smart, pl- you know, the smart plan section and I say, okay, um, which one can I put them on, you know, and and. Um, add them to that. So it just makes it so much easier. Um, Like I've been, I can't even mention like how many, um, like I have a Twilio account. The Twilio, Mm -hmm. um, I probably pay like less than 30 bucks a month for it. And I always get these like random messages from command and just like, oh, hey Kim, thanks for reaching out. I'm like, oh wow, I haven't reached out to this person like a year, but they're getting my text messages, which is cool. So um, it just allows you to um, be present without actually have to be present. You know what I mean? So, um, technology, the systems, um, is, yeah, it's very helpful. 
So you've you've matched, right? Your the your system, right? So your system is I want to follow up with everybody in my database. Right. And yet I have a lot of people in my database. And so I'm not going to be able to manually do all of that because that's all I would do all day. And so now I'm going to couple that with technology and automate it with smart plans, with having Twilio connected to command. So the, um, for anybody that's not familiar with Twilio, Twilio will allow you to auto text. So if your smart plan includes a text message, Twilio will send the text out on your behalf. Yeah. You guys might have received texts from the office promoting different things, right? That's just a smart plan through Twilio that that we're, you know, we're following that system as well. So I love that. So would you say that's also, um, Kim, the the um, a habit that you've created for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, like it, it was a challenge. Um, I like to move fast, like fast, like this market and um, but I realized when I was moving fast and not having the right systems in place and tools, I was losing out also. And, you know, we could touch on that down the road. I was losing leads and stuff like that. And um, I had to get really intentional. I took hours sometimes, you know, editing, but then, you know, adding people to the systems. But it's allowed me to be really intentional um, about who I'm focusing on and who, you know, meets my my attention later down the road. So I love that. It's a yeah. great, um, can, well, lead generation is the number one habit you have to have as a real estate agent, right? But it's, it's getting really specific into that habit in terms of what lead generation are you doing and, and how is, um, and how can you, you know, automate that? Cindy Lee, what would you say is your number one habit that helps your business? Um, my number one habit. This is probably unconventional, but <laughs> my number one habit is completely is prayer. I love that. Okay. Literally pray over my business, what I'm going to do, what I should do. I pray over every house, every client, every process of the transaction. And um, I pray over my mindset, like literally every single thing to kind of give me um some direction as to what to do. And that helps me a lot. <laughs> I love that. And so when we talk about prayer, my next question was going to be about mindset. So would you say that that's also a way that you're able to keep a positive mindset, right? Like I, I talk to agents every day and, and a, a lot of them are rightly so like concerned, the market's shifting. I'm not making as much money as I've made the last two years. I'm not getting the same amount of business as I would. And, and you can go one of two ways with that, right? You can allow that to drag you down and you can spend time worrying about that. Or you can have the positive mindset that even in a down market, thousands of houses will still sell, right? And so even in a down market, agents are still selling real estate every day on the MLS. There's a home being sold for those agents that are willing to, to go out and get the business. So would you say also that that leads into your, to your mindset around the business as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. That definitely helps to keep me positive and to know, listen, I can do all things. <laughs> Through Christ, that gives me strength. So that is definitely one of those things that I repeat to myself all the time and helps me to step into those spaces that I feel that are like scary to me, mm -hmm. um, you know, making calls, doing those different things. I'm trying to step into those more. Those are scary to me, but I can do all things. And so that definitely helps me a lot. I love that. Um, Kim or, Kim or um, Arlene, is there anything else you, you would add around mindset? How are you keeping a positive mindset in the, in the market, in the current market? Well, I think uh, since I started eight years ago, so eight years ago, it was kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And then we had this push up, which was abnormal. And I think the people that started in that period think that it's going to be that way all the time. Mm -hmm not so now I mean I was getting a lot of listings and now I'm dealing like with buyers when I when I first started I was dealing with a lot of buyers also so um yeah I think um my mindset I'm always positive um which I think helps you know get business um the other thing I was going to tell you I, I also did coaching I did a prospecting boot camp for 16 oh. weeks um in the spring months and how so, was that? That was with Glover, right? It was right? great. A lot of, a lot of, uh, 
a lot of good info. Um, there's many ways of targeting um, home buy, you know, home sellers. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I thought it was excellent. So you're a proponent of coaching too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I would love a coach. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I I feel comfortable. Uh, I, I definitely a down, you know, when I look at what I've done this year, I, you know, had a, a nice run the first three months and then it kind of died down. So now it, it's starting to pick up and I'm, I'm confident that um, things are going to keep moving up. I love that. Kim, what would you add into the um, mindset conversation? What are you doing to keep a positive mindset? You know, in addition to what Cindy and Arlene does, like, um, I, um, it's like they always say, you are who you are who you are by um by the five people you surround yourself with and um every morning i start off with like the pivot call james shaw um he's since since the pandemic i just joined whether i'm zoom ready or not i'm there just mm -hmm. listening um and it's been really helpful for like mindset you know it's gotten me through some really bad days in business and then some good days um so it's just being surrounded by positive, uplifting people or people in the business like us, uh, because this business is not, not easy. And, um, you know, it, that, that's been a really helpful to keep in a positive mindset. And I also do affirmations in the morning. Um, I have this little book right here, Good Days Start With Gratitude Journal. And um, I'm not really a big person to, you know, write down, like I, I move fast, like I share, but this has really allowed me to like take five minutes out of my day before making the calls and just jotting down three things that I'm grateful for every day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just, just keeping that positive outlook and, and everything and, um, the journaling and the, uh, pivot shift. Well, I love that. And I, the, the pivot shift ahead, I put it into the chat. That is a great, um, Facebook group where they do it. They do, like Kim mentioned, they do a daily call. They have meetups at our big events, like family reunion and mega camp. There's usually meetup. I know they do separate meetups independent of, um, it, just group meetups throughout the year. Kim, you've been to a couple, right? Um, you've attended a few. And so they, there's a saying, your network is your net worth, right? If you, I see you guys nodding and maybe people on the call have heard that. And I think that it's really true. Like, what does your network look like? Who are you hanging around with? Are you hanging around with the agents that are getting up in the morning and going and lead generating? Are you coming into our market centers for our power hours, right? Each one of our offices leads a power hour with a top agent in our office where you can come in and lead generate alongside of them. If that sounds so scary to you, to anybody on the call, I would challenge you to make that your one thing that you do as a result of this, because even if you don't get a lead that day or you don't set an appointment that day, just being in the room with the people that are lead generating and are having the positive business minded conversations can be really powerful, right? That's why we do our team meetings in person. That's why we do a lot of stuff in the office to get you guys together because we know there's really no better synergy than when a group of high-minded um, business leaders gets together and starts talking about what they're doing that that works. So especially on the days where you're maybe not feeling like doing it, right? Especially on the days where you're like, oh, I don't, I, 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 I just lost a big deal or I lost a client or I, I really just, I don't, is this, this business is driving me nuts. Like those are the days that you have to have a habit in place for your mindset, I think, right? So it could be hopping on the pivot call, calling your coach, um, going into a class or a, a webinar that you're committed to taking, going and just going into the market center and committing to work from there for a couple of hours, asking to meet with somebody on the leadership team that can help you with something in your business. That that mindset part, I think um, 100% of the time is what sets agents apart, is the, the ones that, especially when business isn't just falling out of the sky like it has been for the last two years, the ones that have the positive mindset are the ones that will keep going even when there are um, times that might make you feel like, oh, oh gosh, this business is really hard, right? Because I'm sure all three of you have had days where you thought, oh gosh, this business is really hard, right? <laughs> me too, me too. Um, okay, so- Add one 
thing with the pivot. Yeah. Too. I mean, it also has tons of resources. Like when I'm looking for anything, a particular letter or whatever, it's got some great golden letters on there. Like they're files of like literally everything, agents within the group that have just contributed to things that they've done. So if you're looking for something, you can usually find it there. And also with going into the office, I must say, I realized this towards the end of last year when I started really going in more, even though I kind of dwindled down a little bit. <laughs> um, whenever I went in, I felt like I always learned something from someone. I always picked something up. So it's always a good thing to kind of just take the time to kind of get in there to whatever the programs are, if you can make it, because you will learn something. Even the one of these that we did in the office the other day with Sandra and Matt and Brian, even Sandra, she's a big time agent, right? She was like, oh, I felt like I learned something. Like, <laughs> I mean, and if she can learn something, we can all, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, it's it, um being learning based, I think, is another key to this, right? Like not feeling like, you know, it all. I, what I've heard from all three of you is you're you're learning and trying new things. So you're learning stuff, right? Like you're plugged into different um, coaching or training or processes or and systems, and then you're actually executing on it. Right. So that's the the two the twofold. So you want to put yourself in the room where you're getting inspired and you're going in and you're learning from other people. And then you have to go and build the habits around the execution of it. So that might look like figuring out how you're being held accountable to the execution part. You're getting a coach or having some level of a, an accountability partner in the market center, right? I know that there are tons of agents in our offices that I'm sure would love an accountability partner. Um, we're doing Ignite also. We're running Ignite right now. And I have a group of newer agents that last week all kind of paired up with accountability partners with each other. And they're calling every day now and talking about who, how many people did I talk to? Did I make any appointments? Even if it's zero appointments for that day, just building the habit of reporting it is where the power comes from. Because I guarantee if you do that over time, there will be lots of days where it's not zero. There will be some days where it's zero. And then there'll be lots of days where there where it isn't because you've consistently um, built everything up in that way. Yeah. Yep. So if um so if somebody on this call wanted to get a piece of business in in the next, I know I said 30 days, I'm gonna make it in the next week. So they have one week and they need to find a client immediately. Arlene, what what is one thing that they can do in, uh, right now that will get them a client in this market? Uh call their spear. Okay. Pick up the yeah, phone. Just yeah, pick up their phone, call their family and friends. I mean, it's there's always somebody selling or somebody looking for a house. I mean, it's it's constant. The good thing about selling real estate, right? We're not selling some random software to some business segment where only people running that particular business might benefit from our software. And everyone has to live somewhere. And like Arlene was saying, it's not even necessarily buying and selling it could be rentals it could be turning over if you have a two thousand dollar rental if you do three of them that's six thousand dollars right like you if you can continue to do that um that can be a great base where um like arlene said if they own one door they may own five doors so that one landlord if they have five two thousand dollar rentals that's ten thousand dollars a year that you can just add in as bought as income projections for yourself because every year you might re-rent it for them right and then mm -hmm. rinse and repeat with two or three people you've now set up a great you know baseline of business that you can that you can build off of so i love that um cindy what and would also, you say some oh go ahead arlene sorry and also i mean if you let's say this person doesn't qualify for the rental which i uh one person didn't I was able to find them another rental. So, you know, I had this rental landlord tenant and then another tenant that applied for that apartment. I got him another one. So it's, it can go on and on. Love that. Cindy Lee, what would you say? Someone needs to get a new client in a week. What should they do? Tell them quick. I was also going to say pick up the phone, but now I will say just go to go to everything, go to the barbecue, go to the the networking event, go to somebody's going to need a house or know someone or whatever. Let them know you're a realtor and you can get that business. Don't be a secret agent, right? Yes, yes. Good. I love that. Okay, Kim. 
what if somebody needs needs a client this week where are they going what are they doing um just call pick up the phone and call your clients you okay know, call them and um do a meetup and i'm sure once you meet up with them for lunch dinner whatever it is coffee they'll have someone for you yes okay so my question then for everybody is where is your database and and how are you following up with them? How are you keeping track? And where are you keeping your database, right? If, if it's command, that's great, right? That's your free tech tool at KW. And you can keep your database right in there. Like Kim said, you can put people on, you can tag them. You can put them in smart plans. You can customize the message going out. It can just send you a task reminder to text them on their birthday, right? It can send you a task reminder that you to just call them and use the Ford conversation, family occupation, um, recreation, and dreams. Um, so make sure that that you're calling your database. So we have there's a bold loss. Success is simple and not easy, right? So what we're hearing is talk to people, right? Every day, make a habit of having conversations with people about real estate. Don't be a secret agent. Make sure everyone that you know knows that you can help them buy, sell, or invest. When you're marketing yourself, create custom, um, create some custom uh, information that would be applicable to that segment. So kind of segment out your marketing and make it hyper local or hyper specific towards, um, towards that group. And while you're doing all of that, do it in, um, in connection with what everybody in the office is doing. So make sure that um, I don't, I'm going to botch the saying, but I'm going to try to say it anyway. They say, um, motivation is like bathing. You have to do it. I don't know if it's, motiv you have to do it every day. Right. Or uh, so it's like, you can't just take a bath once and say, I'm clean forever. Every day you have to be the same thing. Every day you have to lead generate every day. You might need a dose of some motivation. And I love what Kathleen, um, put into the chat. She said, she just wanted to add that when you go into the office and network with other agents, you may provide inspiration, encouragement to others. Some days you may need the inspiration and encouragement and other days you can provide it for others. And Kathleen, I, that just really is, you nailed it. You nailed it, right? So if if you need the, the, the inspiration, go into the office and you never know when you're feeling great on a day when you go in, there's somebody else that might've walked in the door right behind you saying, I really need to feel some, some good vibes in here that you can provide. I have a comment. Okay, great. With, um, based on this also, um, I just went to the team meeting um, yesterday. There was a lot of um, new agents mm -hmm. and it, it, it feels good to talk to them and, you know, show them as much as you can, you know, about the business. Mm -hmm. And it feels good. It feels, you know, it feels like family. Another thing I wanted to mention was um, when you interact with agents, um, I was just going to put an example. I had a, a listing. The seller didn't want me to do both sides. So what did I do? I'm going to use an agent from my office. So that's another connection there, which I did. You know, um, everybody that was a buyer that called me, I referred them to the agent. And that's how you get referrals. You need to, um, you know, interact with your, your fellow agents and uh, you get business that way. That's yes. It. Yes. Also, right, coming on these trainings is a good way to familiarize yourself with the agents in the office, offering to teach a class or to come on a panel, right? Um, that's a great way to get yourself in front of in front of agents. Uh, that was a way when I was selling real estate, I was in um, Ulster County. I primarily focused in Ulster County. This was before we had our Kingston office. So I was one of the only agents that serviced Ulster County. So what did I do? I would go into Middletown like multiple times a month and I teach classes there. And I'd come up with the topic, social media, this, that, I teach Ignite. I'd go to the team meetings you know, whatever it was. And the mm -hmm. agents started to familiarize themselves with me. And my last year in production, I think I paid out like $50,000 in referral fees, primarily to our Middletown office because, and I didn't, I didn't do anything other than just go in and make friends with the people that are in the office. So mm -hmm. I challenge all of you to do that as well. Minnie, I see your, your hand raised, something you wanted to add? Yes. Uh, my question is, I always wanted to do something like that, but I thought, yeah, I never asked. And I guess you you answered the question, what, what type of qualification would I need? 
if I wanted to teach a class, like I'm pretty good with the MLS in reference to um, showing different tricks and searching on the MLS. I, um, I see I head wanted, nodding I that they like know. that. Okay, good. I'm going to talk, I'll talk to you offline, Minnie, about teaching a class. Yes. So I don't have to have any special type of qualification. Just, Just be the desire. <laughs> You have to take a 50 hour training. All three of these ladies trained for 50 hours. They passed the 100 question written. No, no, of course not. Whatever you have to share, we want you to come on and share. So if uh, uh, same rules apply. If anybody um, has something that they feel passionate about that they want to share with people, message message me, message Aaron Chambers. Um, we can make sure that we can get you signed up for that. Christine did, did an excellent panel on social media a couple of weeks ago that she was on. Um, and that was really, really helpful. So I, I will tell you guys a secret. You guys like learning from each other more than you like learning from us. So like <laughs> I'm boring, you know, sorry, Aaron and Elisa and Zoe, like we're fine. But like, I think what you guys like most is to hear what people are really doing that are boots on the ground. And so that's really what we want to, um, to continue to provide. Christine, I see your hand raised. Is there something you wanted to add? So yeah, today we're having our tech, uh, ALC tech meeting. And so um, we need people like Minnie because in the third and fourth quarter, we were gonna do matrix tools, back to school matrix tools. We were gonna come up with a catchy, um, you know, we're, we're rolling ideas around and we're going to be teaching people info sparks and other parts of matrix that we don't necessarily no, I've run into agents that have been in the business twice as long as me, and some of them had not even ever heard of InfoSparks, and it's actually a really cool little program, so um, anybody that wants to, you know, chip in, that would be great, because for September, October, we want to teach, you know, little bits of, of Matrix, um, and and obviously, we're, we're going to teach Command, too, but, um, you know, we have to cover all our bases. I love that. Christine, can you put information in the chat, like the oh, link and the, the time? I never even heard of that. Okay. Good. See? See, that's what happens when you show up. You learn something. It's great. Thank you. And Thank I should you. say, uh, Minnie is a great example. Minnie is on a lot of our classes. She is always learning and she's in the office right now I can tell she's in Middletown right like yeah. and she and when I'm in middle when I go to Middletown Minnie's in her office if she's not in a class she's probably lead generating right like so she yes, is yes. the one that follows through on this she's a great example of somebody that comes and learns and then goes and executes on the stuff that she's learning and and um and she has a great business too that she has built out thank you yes okay other questions for our, our panelists or comments or thoughts Oh, can I say something about the system? Yes. Um, something I was actually talking to Zoe about the other day in our coaching, because that's one of the things I've been trying to build out is to get my systems together. But when you look at it, you know, like Kim was saying, I like things to be done like this. And it's going to be, <laughs> especially if you have a lot of people in your database, it's going to take time to develop smart plans for everyone and do all these things. And I like to go fast and it's taking time and it's frustrating. And she was just like, you know, just do 10, do 10, get those done because it's better than having none together, right? That nobody's being touched. You have this huge database and no one's being touched. Let's get 10 people. Then the next time, go ahead and do the next 10. So breaking it down um, will be good to just kind of eventually when you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, I've got, you know, a hundred people together already. Um, so just kind of putting it in different segments and doing, you know, a few a week or every other day, just eventually you can build up those systems that are going to help you. That's what I'm in the process of doing. I love that. Yes. It's incremental over time. It's time on task over time, right? So it's, that's, that's really how real estate works. It's time on task over time. You're not going to send one postcard and get five listings, right? You're not going to call one person in your database and get 10 deals put together. It's time on task doing these things over time is where you get um, where you get the results. And so uh, there's an easy time management tool we have at KW. It's called the 411. It's a business planning tool. Um, and um, what you do is you break down your yearly goal into what you need to do that month. And then based on what you want to do that month, you set specific goals for yourself for every week of the month. So 
for instance, that might look like if your um, your if your monthly goal is to host two open houses, then when you're looking at your 411, you would pick which two weeks am I hosting my open houses. If it's the first and third, you know, Saturday of the month. Now, when you get into the first week of the month, and open house is your goal for that Saturday, you roll out your open house plan that week and you time block for those activities, right? If your goal is to call 10 contacts in your database every day and add them to command and tag them, then that becomes something that's on your, you know, your 411, making 50 contacts or however many days you're working in real estate and adding them into command. Um, and I think that that's exactly Right. And something that I hear agents say all the time is they look at these big projects like managing their database and because they can't get it done immediately, they give up or they start doing it and they get really frustrated by it. Right. Um, because it seems overwhelming. And so taking those bigger, act, bigger tasks and making that maybe, maybe it's a monthly goal, right? So maybe it's a monthly goal to get all of your contacts into command. The first week that might look like just literally figuring out where your contacts are and getting them into one spreadsheet and, and putting in what tags you want people tagged as. Don't worry about anything else, right? The second week it might be Okay, now, now I have my contacts together. How do I get them into command? And that can be done with Scott Leroy. He can provide that service to you. So just ask in the office and we can help you with that. The third week might be, okay, now I got my contacts. They're tagged. They're in command. I got to follow up with them somehow, right? So then that third week could be picking out smart plans, right? And then the fourth week could be now I got to start reaching out to my database. So again, instead of looking and going, ah, I have to do all this stuff and I got to call people and I have to do, you've broken it down. And by, the month is going to go by regardless of whether or not you do things or not, right? Like today is going to end whether or not you're productive or not. And so then the choice is, are you going to choose to be productive and move the business forward a little bit? And then what can you reasonably do each day um, to move the ball down the line? Other question, Christine, I see your hand slip. Was that just from before or did you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah, I had a new thing. Um, something Great. we learned in Pivot, which is really, really cool. And I don't think a lot of people know about is if you're kind of like not into calling or making calls, you can use the DTD2 to kind of hit up people um, with a CMA, um, whether they're selling or they're not. Hey, everybody likes to know what, what their house is worth, blah, blah, blah. Hope you guys are having a good summer. I just printed this out for you so that you have it. Like, and, and you can do that to everybody you've sold to in the last X amount of years. Like I started in 2019. So of course I only have four years of, 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 of people that have bought and sold, but still like, it's another reason to call them. So if you don't want to get on the phone or you have one of those days that you just don't want to talk to people, you can do the CMAs on a DTD2 schedule, which is a really nice trick that we learned from someone that um, lives out in Milwaukee. So I love oh, that. What was that, Minnie? Oh, I said that's where that was created. I do use the DTD2. And I also go on that call pivot shift that Christine was talking about. Yep. And we do learn a lot on that call, definitely. Yeah. Great. So that's a good action item too, maybe that you want to write down if you're taking notes to get into the, so it's a pivot shift ahead Facebook group. And then yeah. in there is information on how to get on the daily call that they host. It's a national call um, for real estate agents. Go ahead, Kim. Christine, yeah. just put in the, um, the link in the chat too. So I guess like my advice to other agents, if they could take something away from this, um, just celebrate the small wins and follow your schedule. Um, you know, again, this business is really, it's, it's challenging, but if, if you dedicate yourself for like one or two hours, just, um, calling, you set an appointment, or maybe you made a referral, a contact, you know, celebrate that win. Um, and then following your schedule, um, I, I can't live without my schedule. Like I have everything there when I'm getting my nails done, when I'm going to the gym, you know, when I'm hanging out with mom and also when I'm meeting with clients. So um it just making sure you prioritize i i take off every other weekend um and that's very rare in this busy busy market and um i get those questions all the time but 
I'm very intentional about my schedule, you know, especially before 1 p.m. Um, and that's that's where I kind of win my morning for the rest of the day. So um, yeah, that's that's my advice to others. I love that. Win the morning, win the day, right? That's great. Okay, so um, if you learned something on today's call, can you give a thank you to our panelists in the chat? Um, mm -hmm. I hope that you, uh, I know I learned something. So that's one of the reasons why I like to host these things is because I always walk away feeling inspired and like I learned something. So thank you, ladies, um, so much. This was really, really informative. And I appreciate, appreciate your input. We will send out the recording. So um, if you wanted to go back and listen to any of these tips that these ladies have, uh, we'll send out the recording to everybody. And thank you again. So go out, figure out whatever your action plans are that you wrote down and get into the office and get into your database. And I'm looking um, forward to helping you all grow your, your business as the year continues to progress. Thank all right. You. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. You Bye. Too. Bye. Bye.